I've already had a, about four beers today. Just got back from uh, visiting. Maybe it was more than four beers, I forget. So, I thought, why waste a buzz, you know? It feels like it's a wasted buzz if I don't do it on camera. Reading some kind of gold-plated book. So. Mm. Just had to wet my whistle there. Chapter 25 of Mosiah. And now King Mosiah caused that all the people should be gathered together. Now there were not so many of the children of Nephi, or so many of those who were descendants of Nephi, as there were of the people of Zarahemla, and that's that other exodus, uh, right? around the same time, a little off-camera exodus. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's like been three. The Jaredites, the, uh, the Zarahimla people, <laughs> and uh, Nephites, the Lamanites, who were kind of from one exodus. You got that? But we're okay now. Yeah, I think it was one of the sons of King Jedekiah, but no. I believe Chronicles and Kings both report that they, all his sons were executed before his, his eyes and then he was blinded by Nebuchadnezzar. But obviously the Bible was wrong because there was a surviving son and he's in this book. Or his, his seed is. <clears throat> Uh, who were the descendants of Mulek? That's uh, that's him. <laughs> Mulek, the unknown son of King uh, Zebukiah, or Zedekiah, yeah, Zedekiah, <laughs> and those who came with him into the wilderness, <sighs> and there were. Not so many of the people of Nephi and of the people of Zarahemla as there were of the Lamanites. Yay. They were not half so numerous. And now all the people of Nephi were assembled together and also all the people of Zarahemla. And they were gathered together in two bodies. And it came to pass that Mosiah did read and cause to be read the words of Zenith. That's those gold tablets that interrupted our flow earlier on. Took us back to the days of King Noah and Abinadi. Two barbecued dudes. <laughs> The records of Zenith uh, to his people. He read them. Uh, yay! He read the records of the people of Zenith from the time they had left the land of Zarahemla until they returned again. So, you know, big mystery cleared up from like the end of the Book of Omni. Would have been cool if they'd have never answered that. Because sometimes life's like that. You but, uh, this is different. And now, when Mosiah had made an end of reading their records, his people who tarried in the land were struck with wonder and amazement. <laughs> Not a yawn in the crowd. Must be a translator error. For they knew not what to think. I'm sure you'll help them with that. For when they 
beheld those that had been delivered out of bondage, they were filled with exceeding great joy. And again, when they thought of their brethren who had been slain by the Lamanites, they were filled with sorrow and even shed many tears of sorrow. Uh, oxymormons, you gotta love them. And again, when they thought of the immediate goodness of God. Amen. Immediate. Yeah, immediate goodness of God. Okay. And his power in delivering Alma and his brethren <laughs> out of the hands of the Lamanites and of bondage, they did raise their voices and give thanks to God. And again, when they thought upon the Lamanites, who were their brethren, of their sinful and polluted state, they were filled with pain and anguish for the welfare of their souls. And it came to pass that those who were the children of Amulon and his brethren, who had taken to wife the daughters of the Lamanites, were displeased with the conduct of their fathers, and they would no longer be called by the names of their fathers. Therefore they took upon themselves the name of Nephi that they might be called the children of Nephi and be numbered among those who are called Nephites. <sighs> Chap uh, verse 13 of chapter 25. That's a classic. And it came to pass that those who were the children of Amulet. Wait. Oh, wait. Excuse me, that was, uh. That's verse 12. Verse 12 is like as long as my arm. I just naturally thought it had to be 13 since everything's a little blurry right now. Here's verse 13. And now all. The people of Zarahemla were numbered with the Nephites, but they don't give you the number. <clears throat> nope, no numbers yet. How, how are we supposed to, like, you know, make sense of all this if you don't give us all the data we need? I mean, I'm ready to start praying as soon as I'm convinced. Oh, is it supposed to be the other way around? Oh, no wonder I got it wrong. Yeah, they're numbered with the Nephites, and this because the kingdom had been conferred upon none but those who were descendants of Nephi. Damn. I can see now why I got 13 mixed up with 12. It's the same shit. Now it came to pass that when Mosiah had made an end of speaking and reading to the people, he desired that Alma should also speak to the people. And Alma did speak unto them. When they were assembled together in large bodies, and he went from one body to another. Oh, not to individuals, to one large bodies. He's speaking to one block and then another block. That almost sounded personal for a second. Preaching unto the people repentance and faith on the Lord. Kind of like Billy Graham. You know, <laughs> Flintstone times. 
and he did exhort the people of Limhi and his brethren, all those that had been delivered out of bondage, that they should remember that it was the Lord that did deliver them. Yeah, see, he made them able to run faster and work harder. And he made their enemies get extra drunk. It's a fucking miracle. <sighs> and it came to pass that after Alma had taught the people many things and had made an end of speaking to them that King Limhi was desirous that he might be baptized. So he could be the first person ever baptized. Unless you want to count those lepers, you know, that take a bath. You dirty bum. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, well, it's the first baptism in North America, I think. I think anyone took a bath up until then. Because they would have said it. And all his people were desirous that they might be baptized also. And therefore Alma did go forth into the water and did baptize them. Yay! He did baptize them after the manner he did his brethren in the waters of Mormon. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that shit. See, I'm drunk. Should have done this. <laughs> Already drunk, and I just started drinking. That's right, I forgot. Well, damn, I mean, they're doing baptisms, you know? Son of a bitch. Isn't that wild? Alma, you're a genius. <laughs> Moses who? Got Alma. He may not shut up, but, you know, at least something's happening, sort of. <laughs> And he did baptize them after the manner he did his brethren in the waters of Mormon. That's why they're called Mormon's first baptisms here. <coughs> I forgot. Imagine. How could I forget something that interesting? Yay! And as many as he did baptize did belong to the church of God. Did and this because of their belief in the words of Alma. <sighs> and it came to pass that King Mosiah granted unto Alma that he might establish churches throughout all the land of Zarahemla. And he gave him power to ordain priests and teachers over every church which he already had, but that's nice. He's got royal sanction to do what he was already doing without asking. <laughs> God told him to do it. That was enough. <clears throat> and every priest, priest preaching the word according as it was delivered to him by the mouth of Alma. Since they didn't have a PA system, and God can't seem to whip up a decent miracle. So they gotta do it this way. Now we need a clergy. Yeah, I can't see how this could possibly go wrong. Can you? And thus, notwithstanding there being many churches, they were all one church. And there was nothing preached in all the excuse me, churches except it were repentance and faith in God. I mean, wow. Who needs the Apostle Paul when we got Alma? It's all here. Throw your Bible away. It's all here. The best parts and the parts we don't like so much, it, well, they just don't bring them up. <laughs> and now there were seven churches in the land of Zarahemla 
Isn't that like in Book of Revelations? <sighs> and it came to pass that whosoever was desirous to take upon them the name of Christ or of God did join in the churches of God. So they have a choice. God or God Jr. You know, who's going to take over the family business. He just needed to get whipped into shape first. A little manhood training. Nothing like getting your ass kicked and crucified to straighten your ass out. And the world and humanity. See, it makes sense. Uh-oh. Maybe it's because I've been drinking. <laughs> And they were called the people of God. And the Lord did pour out his spirit upon them, and they were blessed and prospered in the land. And that's the end of uh, chapter 25. I will see you guys in chapter 26. Peace. Fuck. Out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is, you might be having.